Hello everybody, my name is Chris and I'd like to welcome you back to uh, my series that I'm doing called Blueprint for Composition and this particular segment is dedicated to a review and some practice with the difference between simple sentences and compound sentences. In the last installment of this series I talked about what constitutes a compound sentence and what the arrangement of the compound sentence is and how to identify a compound sentence by its individual parts, <clears throat> as opposed to the simple sentence which we described in the first couple of videos of this series. So at this time I'd like to give all of you viewers an opportunity to test your knowledge how to distinguish between a simple sentence and a compound sentence. So as we go through these sentences on the board here we will identify them and I will give some explanation as to how I know it's one type of sentence versus another type of sentence. So, the exercise directions are label each expression as a simple sentence, S, or compound sentence, CS. Okay? So what we're going to do is label it S for simple sentence and CS for compound sentence. And then I will explain the answer. So, <clears throat> I will give you a moment or two to decide for yourselves what type of sentence it is, and then I will reveal the answer and give some explanation. So let's look at the first one together here. Number one, it says, he woke up late and had to hurry to catch the bus. So in your estimation, does this sentence, he woke up late and had to hurry to catch the bus, does this qualify as a simple sentence or a compound sentence? All right, so take a moment to think about that. Ask yourself the question, does it contain all of the elements that would fulfill the requirements to be a compound sentence? If it does not, then you'd have to consider it a simple sentence. So, one more time. He woke up late and had to hurry to catch the bus. Alright, so, if you consider this as a compound sentence, that would be incorrect. This is, in fact, a simple sentence. So let's label that S. So how do I know it's a simple sentence? You might say, well, it has a conjunction right there in the middle, and didn't you say that when you have a compound sentence it has two clauses joined in the middle by a conjunction? I did say that, and yes, that would be true, but that's not what we see here. We do see a beginning part of the sentence, which is complete, he woke up late, and we do have a conjunction there, true, but we have no comma. Why do we have no comma there? It's because what we have on the other side of the comma is not a clause, it's a phrase. So, had to hurry to catch the bus is not a complete idea. It's not a complete thought. It does not fulfill the requirements of an independent clause. So, I must consider that a phrase. And then, therefore, the purpose of this conjunction is to join the phrase to what? So, here's my verb, had, and here's another verb over here, woke up. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually combining two verbs together, woke up and had. I'm not combining two clauses together. If I were combining two clauses together, then I would need a comma there, but I don't have a subject here in front of the verb had, so I cannot consider this a complete clause. Therefore, these two sentences, parts joined together with and, are not clauses. They are actually joining two verbs. So this would be a compound verb. And a compound verb does not make a clause. So therefore, one simple sentence. Let's look at number two. Number two says, Sam and his friend stayed after school, but their teacher had to go home early. Take a moment to think about that. Would it classify as a simple sentence or compound sentence? <clears throat> I'll read it one more time. Sam and his friend stayed after school, but their teacher had to go home early. All right. In this case, if you said simple sentence, that would be incorrect. This is an example of a compound sentence. So label that compound sentence or CS. How do I know it's a compound sentence? <clears throat> the clear giveaway is this comma and that conjunction right there. That's one clue or one strong hint that this is a compound sentence, but I don't want to just rely on that. I want to look at the other parts of the sentence. So, do I have two independent clauses 
one on the left side of the conjunction and one on the right side of the conjunction. In this case, I do. Right here. Sam and his friend stayed after school. That's one clause. And their teacher had to go home early. That's the second clause. So these are complete clauses. These are complete independent clauses. Sam and his friend, we talked about it in the previous video. This is an example of a compound subject. That's okay. It's not a complete idea by itself just because it has a conjunction. It's joining two nouns here, Sam and his friend. So this is together one subject or a compound subject. I have a verb stayed. And in the other part of the sentence, after the word but, I have another subject, teacher, and I have a verb had. So is it a complete idea? Yes and yes. Therefore, comma, conjunction, necessary. I'm using the word but to show contrast. As I explained in the previous video, the different functions of these conjunctions. But shows contrast. So therefore, it does fulfill all the requirements of a compound sentence. Therefore, CS. Now, three. We saw them at the park and then went out to eat together. We saw them at the park and then went out to eat together. Think about that. Is it a compound sentence? Is it a simple sentence? All right. Take a moment to consider that example. One more time. We saw them at the park and then we went out to eat together. So this sentence does it fulfill all the requirements for a compound sentence? In this case, at first glance, you may say yes, because again, we have a conjunction right here in the middle. But, take care to examine both parts of the sentence before the conjunction and after the conjunction. As you see, there's no comma here. So again, a comma is a kind of strong hint that it might be a compound sentence. In this case, we don't have a comma. We do have this conjunction, we do have an independent clause here. We saw them at the park. That's a complete clause, a complete independent clause. However, do we have a complete independent clause on the other side of the sentence? In this case, no, we don't. Then went out to eat together. So once again, we have to be careful. Does it contain all of the elements of a compound sentence? In this case, no. Therefore, S for simple sentence. So you're saying to yourself maybe, Wait a minute. You just said, and in the middle of a sentence joins clauses. I did say it needs to join independent clauses. This is not an independent clause. It's lacking a subject. So in reality, what this conjunction is doing is joining the verb went with the join with together with the word saw. So we saw and went are the two verbs being combined by this conjunction here or joined by this conjunction. So this is not joining two clauses. This is not joining two independent clauses. That is why there's no conjunction. It's actually joining what would be in reality two verbs. So therefore, simple sentence. All of this together, with the conjunction even, all of it together is one independent clause. Therefore, simple sentence. Four. Fishing and snorkeling are fun, yet I like scuba diving more. Take a moment to consider that example. Ask yourself, does it qualify as a simple sentence or does it qualify as a compound sentence? Fishing and snorkeling are fun, yet I like scuba diving more. If you said compound sentence, you would be correct. This is an example of compound sentence. So just quickly again, how do I know it's a compound sentence? Well, in the middle, you have a comma and a conjunction. So that's clue number one. Look on the left side, do you have a complete clause? Yes, fishing and snorkeling are fun. Still, compound subject, no problem, right? I got a subject, in this case, fishing and snorkeling, two activities, joined by a conjunction that creates my compound subject, but that does not disqualify it from a compound sentence automatically. Is it a complete thought is the more important question. I have a verb right there. So that part is complete, a complete independent clause. Here's a conjunction yet, which again shows opposition, so or contrast. Do I have a complete thought over here on the right-hand side? I like scuba diving more. Is that a complete idea? Is that an independent clause? Yes, it is. So, when I say independent clause, I mean 
a clause that can stand by itself as a complete sentence. So if I was to remove this comma conjunction, put a period here, and use this as a second sentence, the sentences would still be grammatically correct. What I'm saying is, the use of the conjunction is more going to help you to combine ideas together that are related somehow. So how are these two ideas related? Fishing and snorkeling are fun. I like scuba diving more. It's relation of contrast or opposition. You're showing an opposition between the second one and the first one. So this set, uh, kind of sentence construction is a little bit more sophisticated than just putting a period after the word fun and removing that and then having two short simple sentences separated by a period. This shows a little bit more sophisticated thought process and writing um, sentence like this will be more sophisticated than just two simple sentences strung together side by side with a period. So let's look at number five. So number four compound sentence for that reason. Number five, Jane doesn't like ham nor does she like roast beef. All right, Jane doesn't like ham nor does she like roast beef. Take a moment to consider that. Do you think it's a simple sentence or a compound sentence? So again, how would I approach the analysis of this particular sentence? The first thing I'm looking for, does it have a comma and a conjunction? Yes, it does. So right here, we have a comma and the word nor. So I showed you these lists of conjunctions in the previous video, and I said the word nor is a sort of negative word, a negative conjunction. So it shows like a negative situation. So what is the negative situation here? Look at the verb, doesn't like. So doesn't like is a negative verb. And then Jane, our subject here. So let's back it up a little bit to answer the first and most essential question. Is it a simple sentence or a compound sentence? This is a compound sentence. All right? So definitely it does fulfill the pattern or the arrangement and the requirements for a compound sentence. The reason why I'm using nor here instead of or is because of the negative <clears throat> verb right here, doesn't like. And also I have a negative verb on the other side of the conjunction, which is indicated by the nor. The nor indicates also negative. So she doesn't like ham, nor does she like roast beef. All right, so those, the sentence is basically saying she doesn't like either one of these two choices, ham or roast beef. But in order to combine those ideas correctly in academic grammar and academic sentence construction, I'm going to use the conjunction nor. So, is this a complete thought? Yes, Jane doesn't like ham. Complete thought, for sure. <clears throat> nor does she like roast beef. Another complete thought. Do I have a subject here? Yes. Do I have a verb here? Yes. Does like. So therefore, compound sentence. All right. So these are the correct ways that you could uh, label these examples. So hopefully this was helpful and instructive and helps to clarify the essential differences between a simple sentence and compound sentence. So don't be confused by compound verbs and compound nouns and compound subjects and say, okay, wherever there's a conjunction, that must be a compound sentence. My advice is to look carefully at each sentence as you write it or as you read it in these standardized tests, whatever your situation may be. <clears throat> And ask yourselves, does it fulfill the requirements? Does it have all of the essential elements of a simple sentence? Does it have all the essential elements of a compound sentence? And remember, they will test you on your knowledge of sentence fragments as well. So we did talk about how to identify sentence fragments as being incomplete thoughts separated by periods. So you have to keep your eye out for sentence fragments as well with these standardized tests, particularly SAT and I mentioned the communication and literacy test as well for those who are seeking to become public school educators here in the state of Massachusetts. All right, so again, I hope this was helpful and useful. In our next installment, we'll get into what are called complex sentences. So that is all for now. Thank you again for watching. Hope to see you again very soon.